Hello, and welcome to this month's Synth Masterclass with Computer Music. This month, we're going to create a tape string patch using our Zebra CM plugin. This is going to be a contemporary style pad with degrees of vintage which can be dialed in and out at will. Let's begin by loading an instance of the Zebra CM, and we're going to perform an initialize so that we can default all of the settings on the plugin. We do this by going to the upper display, clicking and coming down to the word init for initialize at the bottom of the menu. This will also default the master output volume setting to a maximum of 100. You can locate this master at the bottom right hand side and it's a good idea to reduce this to a value of 35 at this stage so that you don't get any nasty surprises on the volume front. Just a little reminder that any time we make an alteration to a setting or a pot on the plugin, you'll see that value replicated at the top in the display. Let's begin by going over to the Oscillator 1 section, and we're going to leave our setting to a sawtooth and also ensure that our volume is turned up to a value of 100. We're also going to thicken the texture of the sawtooth in Oscillator 1 by applying some aliasing. We do this by clicking on the number 2 so that it's highlighted in turquoise in the upper left hand corner of the oscillator 1 section. This will probably sound a little bit phased when you hear it play. So we can make this more palatable by inducing a degree of detuning. Move to the detune pot, click and hold and drag it up to a value of 4. This will thicken the texture. Now we're going to move over to oscillator 2 and perform some very similar settings. Unlike oscillator 1, we will need to turn the volume up to a value of 100 because by default it's decreased to zero. We will leave the sawtooth set as the default, but we're not going to induce any aliasing on oscillator 2, but we will perform some subtle detune to a value of minus 3. This should give us a sound like this. To add a little bit of extra character to this patch, we're going to use some white noise. So visiting the noise section, which is right in the center here, First of all, put it in stereo. This means that the white noise will play across the stereo field. We'll also need to turn the white noise up, so using the volume pot, turn it up to a value of 38. You'll now hear the white noise when you play a note. Just for a little bit of additional information, you have the option to choose other forms of noise if you prefer, and these are indicated by these icons just to the right of the noise legend. Now we're going to move across to the filter section, and uniquely for this patch, we're going to use a bandpass filter, which is described in the drop-down menu as BP Q-Band. Bandpass filters particularly highlight a set of frequencies in the center of the frequency bandwidth. You can sweep around this using the cutoff control. However, we don't want it to sweep around, but what we do want to do is set the cutoff control to a value of 28. We're also going to use envelope 2 to modulate the cutoff control. So move down to the already assigned envelope 2 pot that we have here and change this to a value of 61. Moving to envelope number 1, this is going to control the amplitude or the volume of our sound. So we need to make a couple of alterations. First of all, change the attack pot to a value of 47. We can leave the decay pot set to a value of 50 and sustain set to a value of 80 but we're going to reduce the release phase to a value of 8. This means that when we release a key, the sound will dissipate very quickly. As we mentioned a moment ago, envelope 2 is heading in the direction of the cutoff control within the filter section. We want to adjust the attack phase of envelope 2 to a value of 62. But we can leave the decay phase set to 50 and the sustain set to 80. The release pop we will also decrease to a value of 8. This means that we get a sort of a swell effect every time we play a sound, and that swell is being induced at both the amplitude level and also the filter cutoff level, and it should sound like this. The main crux of our sound is now in place, but now what we want to do is induce this weird sort of wobbly tape effect. To help us with this, we're going to use the LFO. Move across to the LFO section, and directly below the waveform you'll see a drop-down. We want to select the one which is described as Rand Glide. This means randomized and gliding. On some other synthesizers, you might find the same operation described as sample and hold with a slew. Staying within the LFO section, 
we're going to be reducing the amplitude pot, which is directly below the waveform selection, to a value of 26. What this does is it reduces the amount of output of the LFO, so we have a little bit more control. It's also worth pointing out that we're making alterations to LFO1, which is the LFO selected by default. You can see this is what we're doing by the highlighting of the 1 in turquoise within the LFO section. In order to dictate the direction of the modulation, we now need to go back to our oscillators. Moving back to our oscillator 1 section, locate the tune pot and you'll see directly below a drop-down menu. We want to select LFO1. Then, go to the tiny turquoise circle which indicates the amount of modulation depth. Click on this and set a value of 2. We need to perform a very similar operation within the Oscillator 2 section. So locate the tuning pot in Oscillator 2, go to the drop-down and select LFO1 there as well. The only difference is, when we change the modulation amount, we're going to click, hold and drag and move the mouse downwards to select minus 2 rather than plus 2. This means that modulation is being applied to the pitch of both oscillators, but oscillator 1 is being applied in a positive way, whereas oscillator 2 is being applied in a negative way. When you now play a sound, you will hear it moving around. And that's what gives us our vintage effect. If you want to create even more wobble, or even lessen the wobble, the best thing to do is go to the amplitude pot within the LFO section and just either increase or decrease the value. The results should be fairly obvious. And finally, apply some back-end effects within your door. We're going to use some compression and a little bit of channel EQ to just sweeten up everything we're hearing. So that's our tape string pad for this month. We'll see you next time.